Hey guys, so glad you are here. Welcome to Unity Church of Winston-Salem. It is so good to see everyone. We've got some good visitors today. Thank you, Dan and Shannon, for joining us again. So glad you guys are here. And um, Jason, hi. So glad you're here today. Okay, that is a very good sign. <laughs> the, re the reason is because I brought my laptop today because I'll be singing to play some music. And so about 10 minutes ago, my old school laptop decided to do a hard reset. So we have been waiting on this thing to boot back up and thank you, Jesus, it just did. So <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> So thank God for answered prayers. And you know, I love Unity Church for so, so many things. But Unity Church is a praying church. And um, we believe in the power of prayer, and I hope you do as well. Um, and if you have prayer needs um, today, maybe even after service, we'll have somebody up here to pray with you, to be able to connect in and just really bring you peace and get you some clarity and some understanding about what's going on. But maybe you don't feel comfortable to come forward to maybe do that after the service. So we've got a prayer box out front that's really great. You can certainly sign up whatever your prayer needs are. Put that in there. And Pastor Elizabeth is going to pray over those for seven days. And then we're going to send those to Unity headquarters, which is in Missouri. And they're going to pray over that for another 30 days. So you'll be bathed in prayer one way or another. So that's a very, very good thing. Um, Please, speaking of which, so Bob and Don, our ushers who are not with us today, they were on vacation, they came back, and then they had some issues. So Don's mother has COVID along with her seven-year-old cousin, and Don and Bob had to take Don's mother to the ER yesterday because she fell and broke her wrist. So she is an older lady, and so we're just going to pray that that heals up really quick. But there's a lot of lot of things that are going on. I was talking to Pastor Elizabeth this morning. Um, my wife was actually in the ER this week uh, with some chest pains. So um, the good news, her heart, according to the doctor and the the heart cath that they did, her heart is pristine. So that's good, you know? Um, so that lets us know that it's not a physical issue. Now we're looking at an emotional or potentially, um, you know, an energetic issue that's going on. And, and talking with Pastor Elizabeth, there's a lot of emotional and energetic issues that are going on these days. So again, we know that God is able. We know that he is able to give us clarity and to give us peace 
even in the midst of whatever's going on. Um, so grateful for the beautiful flowers for those who brought that in today. Thank you so much. You know, on Wednesday evenings, we've got a midweek um, service that's fantastic. We have a um, light yoga that Linda always does. Thank you, Linda. Now, you'll be doing it this week, but not next week. Is that correct? Thank you. 27th will not have a, um, a yoga service uh, for that, but then we also have a Diksha meditation service, which is also wonderful. So thank you for everyone that comes and contributes to that. We're so grateful for that. Um, are there any other announcements or anything that we need to be aware of as a church body? Anybody have anything to add? We're good? All right, let's all stand up. We're going to do a wonderful affirmation. And then you're going to go hug your neighbor's neck, all right? So something like this goes, the Christ in me greets the Christ in you, and we work together for the glory of God. Go meet somebody this morning. too comfortable. Let's stand to your feet. We're going to sing a worship chorus this morning. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let's sing it out from your heart today, Kelsey. Sing it out. Surely the presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. You sound so good. Sing that again. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angelry. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. One more time. I think you got it now. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And God, thank you for your beautiful presence here today. God, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is here. And Lord, you are willing and more than willing to answer whatever request that we need. And God, we are grateful. Lord, we open our hearts right now as we're able to connect into all that you are, God, and all that we are through you. 
and through that beautiful I am presence, please speak to us today. Anoint and use Pastor Elizabeth to bring the words that would best resonate with our hearts. And we are grateful. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. AJ, what do we got? Anything? To be determined. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna delay the service because of the to be determined. So you know what they did before music? They just sang. All right. So I had a song picked out. We're still gonna sing it. You just won't hear music behind it. But I just pray that it'll be a blessing to you. And actually, WG actually inspired me to like sing this song this week from his lovely verses that he was talking about. There's a song called Holy Ground. And so we're just gonna enter in. We're just gonna sing, and I hope that it's a blessing for you. We're good? Okay. Maybe we do have music. As I walked through the doors, I sensed his presence. Thank you, Lord. And I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple of the God. He abides here. And we are standing.
there's a part of me that wants to clap and another part of me that just wants to feel the presence here on holy ground, knowing that it's not just unity of Winston-Salem where you find holy ground. Holy ground is everywhere you're standing, but it's for us to recognize it, to recognize the presence is all around you, and to recognize there are higher beings with you. There are angels, there are masters of all dimensions around you, around me, around us. And this is the place that we're being called to step into. And this is what our heart is longing for because you're growing up, folks. You're growing in spiritual awareness. And that's something that I am, you know, feeling so strongly. But yet being in these physical forms, it's like, how do we make that evolutionary leap in consciousness? How do we rise up into those places where I know that we can stand on that ground, that same place that Jesus stood on that high mountain? And as we begin to look, we begin to see more of the light shining in us and the light that shines in each of you, each of us. It's that light of God that's here to awaken you to your true self, to the true realization of who you are right here and right now. This week, I was thinking of Solomon. You know, Solomon was David's uh, child. And he's the one that took over the kingdom after David passed away. And there was always the people. They couldn't actually worship the way they'd like to because they felt like they didn't have a place to go to. They didn't have a building to go to. They'd been traveling with tents, people all across the countries. Remember Abraham, he left his father's dwelling to go seek a kingdom, a place that was not built by hands. He was to go to that place where milk and honey was, oh, where wonderful things would transpire. And then I'm hearing the song in the background, looking for a city where we'll never die. There we'll meet our families and we'll never say goodbye. There will be no strangers there. We look to this. And so as human beings, we conjured up this place. We made this place called heaven. And that is a heavenly realm that we can get to. But we see when uh, little Solomon was, he was young and he said, I'm not prepared prepared to take over my father's kingdom, Lord. Here I am, and I'm just a young man. I'm just actually a child compared to my dad. And my dad was a ruler and a judge over the nation and all the, over all the people. And he was so wise. And, you know, he wrote the Psalms. He did all these things. He was a man after your heart, God. And who am I? But here I am in this position. This is where we are right now, looking at ourselves as just little children in our spiritual consciousness and when you feel that way that i'm just i'm i'm not being enough i'm not doing enough to me that says that you're in that right spirit of saying here i am god here i am here i am many times when i've been with someone that i thought a spiritual person in authority or with i've been with angels and masters and when they began to talk to me it was like what comes out of my mouth or out of my consciousness is you've got the wrong person. I know I've said this to y'all before. I really have believed all my life when someone sees something in me and they call me forth and say, you can do this. It's like, you got the wrong person. I don't have the intellect. I don't have the education. I don't have all that. And then for some stupid reason, I throw in there and I'm a female. It's like, what's that got to do with anything? But I was taught that in my day, women didn't have any authority in the church, not to speak before anyone. And in that, I always felt you got the wrong person. And so this is what Solomon was feeling. Lord, you got the wrong person because he was being called to be the king and to later to build a tabernacle a temple for God, where the Ark of the Covenant would be. And in this, it was like, this is an impossible job. And he was telling God this. He had gone to Gildan. What's the name? I wrote it down somewhere here. Gillian. 
uh, it's a high, high uh, mountain. I think Joshua fought there one time on this high mountain of God. His dad always gave sacrifice, but here he was at this very high mountain he traveled to, and he wanted to, he was giving sacrifice there. And the sacrifice was different than other people's sacrifice because he took it to the highest place there was. And there he had a dream. I don't think he thought it was a dream at the time, but God was speaking to him. And he was telling God, you know, how he didn't have the capability of doing what he was being called to do. You know, I'm no ruler. You know, this is not who I am. And so God said, well, what do you desire? What do you desire, Solomon? What's your greatest desire? And he said, Lord, I want wisdom and understanding. I would like the wisdom and the understanding to know how to know what's right and what's wrong. If I'm going to have to help judge the nation, I want to know that I'm doing it from a place where it's coming from you. I don't want to do it in within myself because I don't have the ability. And so God listened to his desires and God was pleased. Is God pleased when we bring our desires to him? I wonder about that. Because I've recognized more and more over the years, you can get a large group of people together. You really can. If you start talking about how to manifest your desires, how to manifest your desires, what's your great desire? Money, wealth, revenge. That's what God said. He said, you know, that that you asked for, it pleases me. You didn't ask for great wealth. You didn't ask to destroy your enemies. You didn't ask for these things of the world. This is the little line that we're coming to right now. And nobody in this world can judge you. But the divine in you. But to me, this is like a magnifying glass for me to look inside myself and say, what is it that you want? What is it that you truly want? Because Jesus even taught this, it's coming to mind. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the spiritual things. Because don't you know you're a spiritual being? before all else you were before the foundations of this world you were with the father the mother the creator of all things when the stars were flung into the sky wow do you remember do you remember that's something else that i received when i'm up in these this vision that i had years ago and i was saying i can't conceive of all this i mean there was sounds and there was numbers and there were formulas going all around me as this being of light stood beside of me and i said you got the wrong person i tell you and he said all you have to do is remember 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 i can't take it personal right now because I recognize in the remembering, we are all one and we are all connected. Every single one of us are connected all over this world. And the divine is saying, remember, remember, just remember. How can we get to that high place? where Solomon was sacrificing and met with God. And God told him, he said, you've asked right. You please me. For since you asked for that, that is already yours that I've given to you, that we've had since the foundation of the world. Because we were there to watch the creation and know how it was created, everything. And in that, he said, all things will be added unto you. You will be the wisest of the wise. In your generation, in your time, there will be none like you. No one will rule like you do. You'll rule from your heart. You'll rule from love. You'll rule from fairness. And 
all this was given to him and people from all over the land would come to him seeking his advice. But I guess deep inside he was wondering, and will I be a good person to do this? That human stuff is still there. It's still there, even though he saw and sp he spoke with God, it's still there. We drop back into this human consciousness and these feelings and we still doubt. And then the next thing that happens to him is a woman came to him. This is, I guess, after he's been, came back home, that a woman came to him and he, she was begging for him to make a right judgment. She said, look, me and this other woman live in the same house, in the same room. We both gave birth about the same time. We both have a child. And now I wake up in the middle of the night. My baby is lying beside of me dead. And she said, the next morning when I, the light came up, I recognized that wasn't my baby. That was the other woman's baby that was, and she had my child that was living. And the woman, you know, got rained and and said, that's not true. She's just saying that. This is my baby, this living one. She rolled over on her baby last night. She smothered her baby. I know she did. And now she's trying to take my child from me. Just they're the same age and everything. And you can't tell the people can't tell the difference. But this is my child and she's not going to get it. And so the other woman said, please, please, Solomon, King Solomon, will you judge this? Be it right or be it wrong. Whose child is this? I'm sure he took a deep breath and he listened and he said, you're both saying the same story, but you're switching it. Each saying it's your child. Bring me a sword. Someone brought him a sword. He said, bring up the child. He said, okay, divide the child right in two. Give one lady half and the other half. They'll both have half of the child. One lady started yelling out, please don't, please don't. I'm sure she felt her knees crying. Please don't do that. Let her have the baby. Let her have the child. The other woman said, no, go ahead and divide it. Wow. Give it to the woman that's pleading for its life, for this is the mother of that child. And I find myself telling this story. I'm recognizing what's happening, what's happening in the United States is not just happening in the United States. Division, rights and wrong, my story's right, your story's wrong, your story's wrong, my story's right. It's all over this world. Something's about to happen. that will be seen on the world stage, but it begins in you and me. What's true? What's truth? What is truth? We may have been believing a lie for ages, but the light shining in us to bring out our story that we listen to it and then stand back to see if wisdom and understanding begins to come to us, will we push it away? Will we push it away and keep hiding in a lie? You know why we believe lies too and have learned how to do lies and convince ourselves of things? Is that in ancient, 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 philosophies that have been rooted in generation after generation after generation after generation depending on what area you were at what philosophies came your way there are ancestors teachings and they're in the highest places within our consciousness are you with me this is where Solomon went when he met God. He went to sacrifice. And sacrifice in the Old Testament is about sacrificing an animal. He was there to sacrifice his animal nature. The nature when we go back. The nature of an animal that will attack another animal 
because it's hungry or it's a threatened or whatever that attack energy or even rape or anything else if you go to that it's that lowered nature that's in humankind that's from way way back from that fall from whence we came and we became animals with an animal nature that nature is there and so he went to that high place in consciousness to give up all of those things, everything, to stand in meekness like a child and saying of myself, I can do nothing. I am here to serve the people. I am here to bring right, truth, and justice, and freedom understanding and wisdom to this world to these people and who am i to do this this is your story this is my story and as we enter into that place we begin to long to be have the wisdom and the knowledge that we had before the worlds began we are being asked to remember to remember what to remember oneness, to remember kindness, to remember love. This is the root of who we are. But those ancient things, remember even, I think it was Joshua was fighting in battle and the sun stood still and we had an extra for another day. So that battle could be won. The battle we're in right now, you're going to need spiritual help to get through this battle. The light's going to have to continue to shine in the darkness for us longer than it's ever shined before. And this is within you and within me. We have to go to that place where we meet the divine in us or to that place where we clear out all these blocks within us. And we need the help of the divine to bring light to our dark places. It's not to destroy anything in us. It's to be that alchemist and transmute the energies of lower vibration and reuse that energy and reshape that energy where that is no longer a block within us. As we begin to move into those places of love, our eyes will be open, our heart will be open. I find myself sometimes standing here and I speak words that I know are truth and I think I'm going to hold on to them, but I'm just like Solomon. I will fall back down and I question. You know how I know that? It's because I'm not doing the work that Jesus did. Are you? Are you opening the eyes of the blind? Are you seeing the lame walk, the deaf to hear, the even raising the dead? Now from that, I got years ago, yes, we're doing part of that because we're opening the spiritual eyes of others. We're causing those deaf ears that can't hear spiritual things to begin to hear that truth. But there's so, so much more to all of this because it's the purifying of it, the individual where we get where we receive wisdom. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He's the one that came that totally built a temple for God. Now, Solomon, we can go through all those aspects of how he bid, built a physical temple and what they mean, the metaphysical meanings of things. But when Jesus came, and the reason that his father David could not build a temple for God, no matter how much God loved him and he loved God, the reason for that was he was a warrior. He was a fighter. He was a conqueror through war, through division, through strife. But Solomon was coming from a place of the heart, coming from a place of love, a place of always wanting to be, lead me, Lord, guide me, give me the words to speak, Use me, Lord. We come as a little child. Jesus said, a little child shall lead you. We're in that day where the little child shall lead us. That little child that is leading you is the Christ in you. 
placed in you so long ago in the manger of your heart and in your mind connected. In our mind where all the stinking thinking like the sludge that can be around or in a barn. That's where we dwell so often. The piggish nature, stubborn as a mule. We're not saying that any of these animals are wrong. They're symbology of your natures, how you relate late to things. This is the way spirit gives messages to you. When you can understand the words behind the word. That's why we call it metaphysics. Unity is a metaphysical church. Metaphysics is going beyond the physical and spiritually going into that heart space to receive a truth higher than what intellect can give you but when wisdom comes to the mind it comes to the heart it resides there but the mind it has to filter through the mind and this is where the blocks are the intellect so that's why the battle was fought and he had that vision on that huge mountain is because when Joshua was fighting, fighting this battle, it took spiritual help to win that battle of overcoming these, is it many, it starts with an M, but you know, there's Midianites, Sagittites, Hittites, what does it do? All I'm seeing is a meme. But it's, it's something that starts with that. But the one that Joshua was fighting against, these are dwellers of high places. It's metaphysically, they're dwellers of high places. And this is what I'm getting right now. The high places they were in is the high place in consciousness. And so it is the roots of our ancestors that we can't just shift out of overnight. You can't do it. Because I still have my mama's stuff and my daddy's stuff and my grandparents' stuff, all that in me. And one of their silly, excuse me, mom, but one of their belief system is women do not have any authority in a church they are beneath they're to be quiet do you see how silly that is when god calls you if he can cause a donkey to speak he can certainly open my mouth or your mouth <laughs> but these things we hang on to and it's hard to release it it's hard to release it so this is where we are right now coming to that place of setting on the throne with our creator on our heart's throne and overcoming all these lower obstacles and especially breaking through mass consciousness, breaking through individual lives, each person having that challenge. It's like we're with a little chicken in the egg. With a little chick in the egg. Do you know, I've watched chick, little chicks being hatched before of you. And they have to pack their way out. There might be one there just struggling and struggling and struggling. You think, well, if I can just barely crack it a little bit, help it out just a little bit, you'll be okay. But no, it's not true. You try to help that little chick out. He won't survive. It will not survive. So we can share with each other ways of breaking through our lower negative thinking or energy field or whatever we're together to help each other there's places you've walked that i maybe i haven't walked or some place that i've walked that you haven't walked or you're struggling with something we can share but we cannot we cannot free somebody from it you have to work it out your own self and you will because when you recognize someone else has done it They've already finished it. They, they accomplished it. Guess what? It gives you that faith and that knowing that you can too. And that's why Jesus came. He came for you to be free. Free from all the chains and all the slavery of this world. And you are your own savior. He's calling you to that. 
Save you from what? Save you from all this stinking thinking, all this pain, this suffering. But you have to go through it. You have to go through it. And I'm recognizing some things. I'm thinking, Lord, why, why, why? I know, you know, I've seen miracles happening. Now, why can't I just see my little dog be healed and wholly healthy just like that? Because I know it's possible. I've watched people. If they've changed instantaneous, what's here, what's happening? But there's something else to learn. If we're so connected to something, there's something to learn. We have to turn loose of everything, everything, everything. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Use me. We are here to be, be those vessels, those channels for change on this planet. The change begins within us. And then once it does, you go through such low places that you are like that child. You're just excited about what's going on. And you're not trying to say, look what I can do. Because the ego self begins to just fall away. When our ego self gets out of the way, that part that wants that self-glory, that self-recognition and all this, and I know I'm just rattling it here, it seems like, but this is what's coming to me. When we come to that place, we'll know from whence we came and where we're going. You're standing in actually an age that has been foreordained for this. We are growing up, humankind, and you are the seed of God. You will, do I go there? Yes. You will one day create your own universes. And your heart and your everything of who you are will come into alignment of the knowing. The knowing of who you are. So it's not easy, folks. It's not easy to be born again, to be born back into the energy field, the light of who you are. You work for this. You find out who you are. And if you don't make it this time, maybe some other time, some other dimension, some other world, some other something, but you are destined. To become gods. Know you not that you are gods? Was it Jesus that said that? I think so. No, we don't know it. No, we do not know it. But the age is the age of Aquarius. Known back from the beginning. That we would go through cycles, thousands and thousands of different cycles, until we come to this one. The last one was Piscean age that we're going out of self-centeredness. Is that not what we were about? Self-centeredness. Kill somebody for a twenty-dollar bill because I want. It. Take your livelihood. Stab you in the back to get your job because I want your position. Do you feel what's being said? This is what we've been seeing. So look at the whole world. It's not just your neighborhood. It's not just America. It's what's happening. The change is beginning within humanity. And we can't hold all this rage any longer. It's coming up. But it's not for you to see my rage and, and judge it. It's for me to see my rage and judge it. And for me to come to that place, this is not who I want to be. As I use myself, I'm using you also. It's for each of us to come to those places. For me, for us to truly want for ourselves, for others, what we want for ourselves. I want you to have plenty. I want you to have prosperity. I want you to have food. I want you to have clothes. I want you to have the things that Mother Earth is here to give to each and every one of us. Usually when there's breakups in relationships, 
we want them to be hurt, don't we? Or you're mad at a friend or any of that. We want revenge. Wow. Have you ever felt that before? I've been given a gift this lifetime. I know it. I don't own it enough, but I know it. That gift is love. That's why I've stood before masters before. For Bhagavan. They call me in on a personal, just come to my place and talk with me. We don't look at your degrees. We don't look at the outside. We don't look at your male or female. This is for everybody. The divine looks at your heart. My heart is not as pure as I know it can be. This I know. I fall down all the time. But it helps me to see I have further to go. I have further to go. But you can spit in my face. You can beat me, hold a gun to my head, rape me, abuse me. I feel like that karma has passed because I've walked through it. And the hate, the bitterness, the revenge has dissolved. And I'm not just speaking words. God knows my heart. This is where, what I wish for all of you. Because everything I went through, I learned from it. And also, I paid back karma from other times. I'm sure I took from people. And everything financially was taken from me. Because I left it all because I knew my life would be taken if I tried to fight for it. Some of you have been in those places, I'm sure. But it's not about just me. It's about, it's about all of us. It's about all of us. We walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. But later you learn you don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear it. And you're going to hear things in the weeks and the months to come that want to scare the living whatever out of you. Hope it scares the hell out of us because we don't need that. But as we walk through these, go to your heart. Go to your heart for everything. Go to your heart. Be like Solomon, if you will. Ask for that wisdom and that knowledge. Ask for that. And seek it from that high place. The divine will lead you and guide you into all truth. And don't be afraid of the truth when it comes. Know that you're overcoming those past teachings. Because you have been slaves for too long. You have been slaves. You have been slaves. You are in slavery right now, whether you know it or not. Stand up for love, peace, harmony, and become the truth. Let the change begin in you. For some that are not waking up, this makes no sense whatsoever. I'm sure I'm just going blah, 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 blah. But as the seeds begin to blossom within you, you'll recognize there's a deep, settled peace that you've never known before in your life. Because you are beginning to build the temple of God. It's the energy of light that begins to expand in, around you, and through you. That light that Jesus was shining forth on the Mount of Transfiguration where he had evolved at such a level of oneness with the divine that it's just vibrational energies. Just vibrational energies is what we are. And in that vibrational energy, he, can, he, he could raise his lower fleshly energy into a finer vibration and become light itself. And not light like 
light around here, but it's a, it's a different light. It's pure creative energy. And he also went up or he lifted it up to such a high place. If we, we have to use terms like that on this planet, but that high place, and then he could lower it back down into this form is this. I know if I wanted to go to Venus, I could go to Venus, but I changed my outfit. I don't have the flesh on. If I went there in spirit, I would not have this. I would have the, uh, the elements of Venus would be my clothing. The makeup of Venus. And then it would seem solid to me. Go to Mars or anywhere else. It's you, if when you go in spiritual awareness, you become what that is. My head says, I hope the heck I'm saying truth. <laughs> Stop it, listen. But we shape shift as spiritual beings. And so now we're coming into a place where we're going to connect with deeper truths within our own self. So just hold what you've heard today, put it on the shelf, do whatever you want to with it. But I hope you love me anyway, whether you agree with me or not. And I sure do love you. And I know we're on our way to something beautiful. This Aquarian age, read up about what Aquarian age means. It's a time of peace and love and harmony. And it doesn't happen just like that. Like I'm, what I'm realizing, wisdom when it comes forth. And you think you got it. Oh, ooh, I like that. Yeah, that what you just said was really truth. And I'm going to hold on to that. Oh, it's got to take root in here. And the mind has to process it. And that's it turns into understanding an understanding that is um, a divine understanding then it merges into the heart and consciousness then it is just pure intuition it's just a knowingness it just keeps building and building and building so that's the path you're on right now where you wouldn't be here on this planet earth today it's an amazing experience what we're going to go through and i could tell you about i could tell you more things but i think i'll wait till another time but i'm seeing i'm seeing why america has been established ages ago and and how we got so confused but you are here to be the light of the world people the light of who you are is going to spread all around this world and there are other lights all over the planet. It's not just us. It's not just us. As the Old Testament says, and the knowledge of the Lord shall fill this whole earth as the Spirit of the Lord begins to come forth. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that are prepared for you here and now in this generation. Thank you for volunteering to come to this planet. I know you feel like, some of you feel like that you were thrown onto this planet, that somebody just made a mistake by having you. You know, somebody might think that, but God doesn't make mistakes. That's what you're here for right now. God doesn't make mistakes. Now, I don't care what lifestyle you've ever lived. Life can change. We change it. We were given this place, this planet Earth, to make of it what we will. Golo, look what we made of it. Are you ready to change? Only love. Only love. Only love will change us in the world. Let God's love lift you to the highest place you could ever go. <coughs> and when you get there, just keep going higher and higher, okay? I love you all. I hope this has been a blessing. Thank you for the honor. It is truly an honor to be here and to be with you. Thank you so much. Would you like to take over for us? We're going to echo those sentiments of love taking us higher today.
Let's do the next one. It's all good. Just push the fast forward button. So it's a different song. Yeah, just push the button that looks like it's... There we go. We'll work it all out. Wake us up. Oh, we're going to wake it up. It's good to have fun in the house of the Lord, yeah? The love is taking me higher Than I've ever been lifted before Lord, keep it up and help my desire To be at your side forevermore You know your love keeps lifting me higher Presence and realms where you dwell and where you abide, and we are grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. I feel like I need to see if I can read this morning. So can I share with you a daily word? Because that's my hang up is reading. Don't do that well. Or that's my story. If you will just close your eyes and let's just relax for a minute. I place my trust in God. Can you say that with me? I place my trust in God. Can you say it like you mean it? I place my trust in God. Few things are a great comfort than the deep and abiding trust in God. For when I trust, I move more confidently through life. I feel the wind of my back and am made strong in the face of adversity. In the past, I may have felt disappointed when I misplaced my trust. The things of the world are impermanent. Even people come and go. The truth of God as the one presence and power in the universe and as my life 
is everlasting, unchangeable, and unchanging through all the seasons of life. Even as I grow, evolve, and deepen my spiritual understanding, God is always my source, the inspiration I return to again and again. My freedom to seek and discover lies in the awareness that I can always trust in God. Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen.